Hello, my name is Dr. Hart Pinto, and today we're going to be talking about diverticular disease and diverticulitis. This is lecture four in our mini series. Okay, so first of all, we need to know the definitions. A diverticulum is the outpouching of the colonic mucosa through the colonic wall, giving the characteristic appearance in the picture below. Diverticulitis is the acute inflammation and infection of these colonic diverticula and can make patients very unwell, as we will discuss later on. Okay, so what predisposes people to developing diverticular disease? The peak age of presentation is between 50 and 70 years, but diverticular disease is a progressive disease that usually occurs progressively from a younger age and is identified later on when the complications and symptoms arise. We know there is an association with low fibre diets. Furthermore, in westernised countries, we observe a higher incidence of disease. So what is the pathophysiology of diverticular disease and diverticulitis? So firstly, a low fibre diet results in the loss of stool bulk you therefore get a high colonic pressure which is required to mobilize such stools. The high colonic pressures cause the herniation of the mucosa and the submucosa through the muscular layers of the colonic wall. A fecalith or a stone of faeces obstructs the neck of the diverticulum which causes stagnation of the intraluminal contents. This leads to localized inflammation and potentially the development of a diverticular abscess, a perforation and faecal peritonitis. An important step in the management of this disease is preventative management, the aim of which is to prevent the development of further outpouchings which can lead to episodes of diverticulitis. As doctors we want to promote for our patients high fibre diets, the use of stool softeners, and increased fluid intake, as all of these help to reduce intraluminal pressures and therefore prevent the development of further diverticular. Okay, so our preventative measures have failed and we've got a patient who presents with acute diverticulitis. These patients typically present with a rapid onset left iliac fossa pain. They may be pyrexial, nauseous, and have a change in bowel habits such as diarrhea or even blood from the back passage. On clinical examination we find that they are most tender in their left iliac fossa and a sign of guarding is present if there is a presence of diverticular perforation. Okay, in any patient that presents with acute diverticulitis we want to take some bloods. We want to know what the blood count is especially if they're bleeding from the back passage the white cell count which indicates the degree of inflammation as well as the CRP and the urea and electrolytes if they've been complaining of loose stools it's important to consider whether they're going to require any IV fluid resuscitation. We also want to make sure that the patient is grouped and saved so that they're prepared for theatre should they need it. We also want to make sure that we've ruled out other causes of abdominal pain such as cholelithiasis and pancreatitis, hence why we want to make sure that the LFTs are within normal range and also that the amylase isn't significantly raised. It's also imperative to make sure that every patient has an erect chest x-ray because there may be concerns about a perforation. CT abdomens are very important and help with the identification of complications such as abscess formation and identifying the site of the perforation should one have occurred. Patients with acute diverticulitis are going to need good broad spectrum antibiotics with good anaerobic cover such as tazacin or kefiroxin and metronidazole. In those patients that require surgical management it's typically managed with a segmental colectomy or a Hartman's resection. Surgical management is likely to be considered if patients are not having a good response to medical management, there's evidence of a perforation or an abscess that is not amenable to percutaneous radiologically guided drainage. I hope you have enjoyed this lecture. 
and that it's helped you with your revision for your upcoming exams. If you like the video, please subscribe. If you want to see other lectures from our series, please click on the links below. Thank you for your time.